International Water Safety Month. And joining us today is three-time Olympic gold medalist and swim safety champion, Rowdy Gaines, with some advice to keeping kids safe this summer in the water. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Rudy. Appreciate it. And, you know, especially, you know, we're getting up, gearing up to that Memorial Day holiday. The city pools are opening. The beach is open. People are going on vacation. And especially for, you know, new parents, this might be the first time they're having one of those experiences. Yeah, and, and that's why it's so critical to be able to provide that water safety net for your child as we head into the summer. And that net literally is swim lessons because drowning is an, an epidemic in our country. It is the number one cause of unintentional death for those children in that one to four age group. So I literally tell parents, hey, listen, we found the cure and the cure is swim lessons. If a child takes those formal swim lessons, it reduces that risk by 88%. So it's really important that as we head into the summer, they are able to provide the, for those swim lessons for those children. Let's talk a little bit about age group as far as, you know, six months, a, a year. When should, ki when should parents start looking into getting their kids comfortable with the water? Well, every child is, is different, Rudy. I mean, every family is different. In fact, some children within the family might be different in the ages that they are able to put those children in the swim lessons. My theory, and again, it's just a personal one, is the fact that when a child learns how to walk, that's when they can escape from their parent and find water. Water is a magnet, especially in the Chicago area, because not only do you have the swimming pools, but you also have the lakefront, right? So it can happen in all kinds of different scenarios and in different bodies of water. So, uh, you know, it's really important that you decide when that happened. Maybe it's a mommy and me class when they start to learn to walk. But regardless, the life-saving skill that I like to talk about is the ability to float on your back. And that can happen at a very young age. It's never too early to learn how to swim or at least to be water safe, safer in the water. There's no such thing as being completely safe, but to be safer in the water. Let's talk a little bit about false senses of security, um, especially using floaties. I think sometimes, you know, you put them on and you think, hey, the yeah. kid's going to be okay because they have these. I, you know, they serve a purpose, no doubt about it, especially ones that are certified. But they also become, as you said, that false sense of confidence because a lot of times those floaties that are on the arms, a child will be vertical in the water, right? And the skill they want to learn is to be, have the ability to be able to float on their back. And sometimes when a parent is not present or the child imagines they have those wings on, they'll jump in the water without them. And that creates havoc. If a floaty is left in the pool, the child will sometimes try to reach for it. So again, the floaties are, are a, a fun, important skill set to be able to have around the pool, but they're not the key one, right? They're, they're an added asset in cer certain circumstances, but they should not be counted on 24 seven with your child. Uh, uh, maybe a, a tip for some of those parents trying to teach their kids or kids that are in swim lessons now about floating. Uh, they might keep their head up, but then the rest of their body goes down and keeping their tummy up. Tell us a little bit of maybe a, a trick or something that parents can teach their kids as far as that. Well, uh, drowning is silent. It, it's yeah. not like the movies, you know, where you're, you're yelling and scre screaming. The water envelops the lungs so the child can't speak. And in fact, most drownings, between 80 and 90% of drownings, happen right in front of the adult when the adult is not paying attention, has become distracted. So I guess that's my second message heading into the summers. Please do not take your uh, eye off your child. That, that may be more important than swim lessons themselves. I, I just really, I beg parents, please keep an eye on your child 100% of the time because a child in as little as 30 seconds have that ability to drown. It's, it's, it can happen in a blink of an eye. So it's really important. Please keep your eye on your child. Let's talk a little bit about pool parties. Uh, a message for the host, especially, you know, you, get, you might have a pool in your house. You may have gotten one this year or the kids may want to come over, but you may not know everyone's skill level. And parents, you know, you may not have an extra parent. Talk a little bit about having a guardian there that's not distracted, that's watching the kids. Yeah, I, I get a Google or every time a child drowns and um, it, it breaks my heart because I, I think how preventable it is. And the reason I mention that, many of those stories I read is when a child is at a party because once the parent is in a party, 
they want to be in that social setting, right? So they're, they're thinking, well, the adult next to me is probably watching their child, and that's just not the case. So there has to be that water watcher, right? You literally assign an adult. You have to watch every single kid, and you have to pretend like you're a lifeguard walking around that area and doing nothing but watching each one of those children. So, uh, yeah, at a party, it's really important that there is that adult or adults that consistently are watching the pool and looking for any signs of distress with children. Yeah, just like, you know, make it 15 minute shifts, make it some, you know, a sign up sheet, but something where it made us not one person's responsibility, but that everybody kind of takes a turn not being distracted uh, watching the kids. Oh, there's Let's actually little... tags. There's yeah. actually tags that you can put them around their neck. I mean, it, it sounds kind of silly, but yeah, you literally put a necklace around a, an adult's uh, neck and say, okay, you're that person watching, it's your turn. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, you're that parent, you don't have a pool, but you get those invitations, the party's from two to six. Hey, I'll drop the kids off and I'll go run some errands. I'll go do something else. Talk a little bit about, you know, maybe the questions a parent should ask or look for when their kids get invited to a pool party. Well, the, the number one question to ask is, do you have someone watching the children at all times? That's the absolute key. It, it, you have to make sure that there is an adult that has the capability to do CPR, perhaps. That's an important skill set to have someone at that party know, to know CPR, to have an emergency response plan. It's really critical that you do that in a party setting because, again, it can happen, and it's happened so many different times that it has happened at a, a, a group-type setting because, again, the, the, the child doesn't look like they're drowning. It looks sort of like they're just bobbing up and down in the water, just like all the other kids in the group. And uh, it, it, it happens time and time again. So that's the number one question you should be asking that adult that is hosting that party. Do you make, are you making sure that you have somebody watching at all times? So I know we're talking about, you know, younger kids, you know, ages one through four, and this is the, uh, the majority of when this happens. But I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about teenagers, because I hate reading those stories of kids who yeah. get into peer pressure, they're out with their friends, they may not know how to swim, but they get pressured into doing something and then tragedy ends up striking. Conversation that parents should be having with their kids, um, especially, you know, or the moments that those kids should be standing up for themselves, or, you know, how do you navigate that, uh, especially in those teen years when parents necessarily aren't around? Well, and, and that's another staggering stat is the fact that it is a leading cause one to four, but is the number two cause of an unintentional death in the age group from five to 14. Now, in the younger age group, it usually is happening around a pool, hot tubs, bathtubs, a, a controlled setting. But in the older age group, it's usually happening happening in an open water setting, for example, the lake. And that's why it's really important that if you are in those teenage years, do not be embarrassed. It's okay that you don't know how to swim. It's not something that you should be ashamed of. It's something that you can do something about. And a lot of times, those teenagers do not know how to swim because the fear is passed down generationally. Um, that's the number one cause that, that African Americans do not know how to swim is because the fear that their parents have has been passed down. But that's something that I try to tell parents, hey, it's not too late for you to swim. An adult can learn to swim as well. It's not going to be as easy as teaching a child because there's that, that fear that has been set in, but it can happen. And that, that ability to teach that to that young child, that teenager, can definitely happen. It's never, ever too late. And let people know, that, you know the website where they can go ahead and find more information. Stepintoswim.org. We have a, a, a zip code locator on there where uh, a family can actually find a local lesson provider that teaches those swim lessons, especially in those neighborhoods that, um, that are fragile, that are in low income. We want to be able to provide swim lessons regardless of whether you can afford them or not. So we are trying to help that across the country. And there's a lot of other tips and hints that you can find on our website at stepintheswim.org. That is wonderful information. We want everyone to have a wonderful and safe summer of, of 2024 and all the summers that they have uh, in the future. And Rowdy, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.